Cool meal for our table, Chara. A hundred thousand welcomes, my friends. I am the last Jacobite. Come in and sit down, and today let's talk about what I'm going to call the SMP deception. Two quick headlines for you. First, in the Herald today, you'll see that those patriots, those great folk who have set up a camp at Holyrood until independence comes. Well, they're getting evicted. And guess who's evicting them? The Scottish Government. Now, who's the Scottish Government? The SNP. They're going to go to court to fight it. They're going to fight it themselves. All strength of them. And if I can do anything to help, if anyone sees us and I can do anything to help, please call me because I'll be there. Second headline, and you'll have seen this, it's been floating about for a while, but it's actually at the crux of the SNP deception. It's this, Manchester votes to become part of Scotland. Well, quite frankly, my wife, she's from Yorkshire, we've got family, we've got friends in the north of England. The north of England is no different than Scotland in many ways. We're all being shafted by Westminster. And I, if Scotland were independent and Yorkshire or Manchester, or wherever in the north of England wanted to come and be part of a greater Scotland, I'm all for it. Here's the, here's the thing. The SNP are putting the cart before the horse. What do I mean by that? Well, this is the first part of these videos and today because it would take too long otherwise I just want to talk a little bit about the leadership of Nicola Sturgeon. Nicola Sturgeon was Alex Salmon's deputy and of course after the rigorendum where we were cheated and denied the true result of course no politician will say that but we all know it's true. After that rigorendum, Salmon did the only thing that he could do. He fell on his sword and he resigned as First Minister and he handed the reins to Nicola Sturgeon. And of course, we all hoped. We all hoped. We all had the Facebook banners in Nicola We Trust. In Nicola We Trust. And the phenomena that's happened in Scotland is amazing. We have wiped out every other political party in Scotland. We delivered 56 out of 59, probably should have been more, it was very narrow, MPs to Westminster at the general election. Now let's talk about that general election. The thing is this, as everyone knows, Labour is dead. Jeremy Corbyn is no saviour for anyone. He doesn't believe in Scottish independence, so why would any Scottish patriot vote for him? But besides that, besides that, you see the revolts. He tried to do a cabinet reshuffle. Half the party revolted against him. It'll be decades before Labour's in a position to be a UK government again. That's just fact. But here's the thing. During that general election campaign, there were a couple of things in play. And the first was this. Nicola Sturgeon did not want to be handed the crown. She wanted to win it on her own merits. Fair play. However, it became more and more apparent that with the disarray in English politics, 
there was an opening, a gap, a niche. How often do we now have to hear that the folks, especially in the north of England, will vote SNP if the SNP wield the candidates there? You see, British politics is a murky business, but it's also quite wide open and obvious, isn't it? Labour's gone. Nigel Farage, really? Really? The Liberal Democrats, <laughs> oath breakers to a man and woman. So yeah, there's a niche. And yeah, on the face of it, but we'll cover this in the second part tomorrow maybe. On the face of it, the SNP seem to be a more progressive, to use their buzz term, socialist party. But here's the thing, Nicola Sturgeon, somewhere along the line, got caught up in her own popularity. And out of that grew this, a simple question, but it's a question that goes to the very heart of what the Scottish National Party should be. Because what the politicals are asking, what they're searching for, what Sturgeon deeply desires is a way to field SNP candidates in England. You see, the SNP, like any other political party, exists in the main for political power. And not being satisfied with political power in Scotland. Not being satisfied with being the third largest party at Westminster. There are those within the SNP, I'm sorry to say, who have their eye on the prize of becoming the second biggest party at Westminster. That's why, from the debates at the general election onwards, Sturgeon said nothing, not one thing, about independence. In fact, the only thing she even said about independence was that the election was never about independence. Well, I'm sorry. For me, and for hundreds of thousands of you out there, maybe millions, that was the only thing the general election was about. We knew we'd been cheated in the referendum and we were voting not to give Nicola Sturgeon petty power, not to become the third largest force in the corrupt West Monster politic, but to send a clear signal that we wanted an independent Scotland. What Sturgeon done with that? Exactly nothing. As I said in, the other day in my blog, what she said, all she said, is let's kick it into the long grass. Well, folks, I'm telling you, after May, you will see a concerted push by the SNP to run candidates in England. Don't believe me? Wait and see. And I'll tell you the thing that should have made all of you sit up and listen. It was the day before the general election when Rupert Murdoch came out in the Scottish Daily Hun and supported Sturgeon. You remember it? The takeoff from Star Wars, A New Hope. Whilst in England, of course, Murdoch was gall guns for Tony Blair. That should make you suspicious. Sturgeon has sold out. It's as simple as that. Now, she can prove me wrong. All she has to do, all she has to do is lay out a clear roadmap for independence because I, like you, and like many others, we can't see it. 
we don't see what the point in waiting for another maybe end them in 2018, 2020, 2025, what good that does. Because right now, Scottish pensioners are dying, Scottish disabled folk are dying, Scottish un unemployed are committing suicide because of sanctions. And the cuts that we've experienced thus far under this Tory monster government is as nothing as compared to what's coming. At Westminster, we have politicians and they stand up like Angus Robertson to make a valid point. They get laughed at. Laughed at. If you're not angry, you should be. The vow was a lie, but I tell you now, supporting the SNP is a lie until, until they turn around and put Indy right at the top of the agenda. And it's simple, it's easy. Here's how we do it. Let's make May's election a proper referendum. Here's what I mean. I challenge the SNP and the other Scottish parties. You put independence top and centre of your manifestos. And if the Scottish people vote you, and there's a majority, not just of SNP, but a majority of independence-minded MSPs return to Holyrood. I tell you, that is a mandate that no one could deny. We could be free the day after the May elections. What happened? Because Sturgeon has sold out. I probably said more than I wanted to, and this time flies, and I know you don't have much time to listen, so for now I'll say Slanjiba, and this is the last Jacobite. God bless you, and Sora Alba Gibrath, Free Scotland forever.